Hello, hello, hello. I have to admit it is really uh, weird for me to speak English and I hope you will be patient with my English because it's my what fourth language and I don't really use it much, but I will do my best, I promise. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I am a YouTuber. We call ourselves nowadays EduTuber because it's just, it sounds cooler. Uh, because we want to separate ourselves from the YouTubers who do kitten videos and gaming videos, with all due respect to my colleagues, but EduTubers deal with education. And me, myself, I and my team, we deal with German as a foreign language, and we normally deal with advanced learners. My channel is called Deutsch mit Maria. Maybe you have seen some videos, maybe you haven't, um, it's not necessary to follow my talk and maybe you have been wondering um, yeah how comes that I know the secrets of a happy teacher I guess one of my secrets is that I consider myself being quite a happy teacher and as to my teaching career I have been teaching for the past I don't know Brazilian now 20 years let's say and I studied to become a teacher. I studied to become a teacher in Germany. I started in Latvia and Riga, where I'm from. And I finished my studies in Nuremberg in Bavaria in Germany. But somehow my very long way of professional self search uh, led me to YouTube. It's weird, but at some point I noticed I'm, I feel mostly comfortable teaching adults. This is what I mainly do. But the things I'm going to speak about today are definitely valid for any teacher standing or sitting. In, in Corona times, we're rather sitting in front of screens, uh, in front of any audience, any students. And I will be happy to look into the chat and uh, get some, some of your questions. But I guess to sh I would like to share some ideas with you first and I will be looking with, as we say in German, with one eye in the chat in case there are important questions there. So to speak about a happy teacher, probably we should start with talking about unhappy teachers. What makes teachers unhappy? Apart from the current situation in the world where most teachers who were used to teaching offline were forced to start teaching online. And I have heard many screams from desperate teachers who were saying, come on, I'm used to talking to a live audience. I need people in front of me. I can't be talking into a camera. And um, yeah, the funny thing is I've been teaching for the past four years online 100%. So I maybe I conduct one or two seminars a year, or maybe, I don't know, five or six uh, in normal times uh, when I talk to teachers or I talk to students. But normally I will work online all the time. And I have to say it doesn't really matter. So all those screams about the mostly technical part of the story. So, oh no, we have to talk into a camera and we have to use Zoom and uh, we are losing the students' attention because, yeah, we can't, I don't know, um, lead their attention to us uh, if we know that they have Zoom open on their computer and probably next to Zoom they have five other windows open and maybe they're playing a game or something uh, next to the class. So I think it doesn't really matter. So what matters is what is it that brings you to be a teacher? What is it? Why, why, why do you do this? And I would like to tell you that the word teacher could be translated from some ancient language and it could mean something like the person with the bright eyes. And now probably you will yawn of boredom and you will say, come on, to become a teacher, I studied forever, I learned so many things and I know uh, in which sequence what to teach to my students. For example, if you teach a language, you could say it takes a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience to really teach someone. 
and I prefer quoting my respected colleague uh, Steve Kaufman, the polyglot from Canada, whom I will be interviewing later today. So check the program. It's after six at some point, 6.45, I guess. I'm really excited and really look forward to that. So Steve says, you know, learning doesn't happen in the classroom. Boom. Uh, okay, <laughs> where does it happen then? He says, learning happens in the head, in the brain. So when your students go home or in the current situation, when they switch off the computer and start doing their homeworks or think about the class, this is where learning happens, which is weird, right? Like we are used to thinking that we are the people who bring knowledge to other people, normally younger, or in my case, to just to other people, not necessarily younger than myself. So um, what do we need teachers then for? We do need teachers if we come back to the fact or to the idea I had that a teacher is a person with bright eyes. What does it mean? It does not mean that they have proper lighting like I have here. It means that they have a vision. It means that the teacher is interested in his students or her students is interested in people generally is interested in a development or in self-development, which we tend to forget. And I know many awesome teachers and what they have in common, they are constantly developing. And it's not about new methodology in terms of uh, how to teach language or something. They are constantly working on themselves as a personality. They are learning new things. For example, the, one of the best decisions ever for myself as a teacher was to start learning a language consciously. I mean, I know several and I'm learning my sixth language now, which is Spanish. And when I started taking classes, it was like a whole new world. I speak five languages, let's say, on more or less the same level. And now starting the sixth language was like, oh no, I can't speak again. It's like, I feel helpless all the time. Um, I keep forgetting vocabulary. I need explanations and grammar. And I have a very, very, very patient teacher. Uh, he's from Mexico. And uh, here I have to, th to thank him because he never says, oh, Maria, you should remember this. You know, we talked about it two months ago, which is the favorite phrase of all teachers in the world. Like, oh, kid, you know, we spoke about it two weeks ago. You should go back to your notes and refresh your memory. I think it's almost criminal to send students back somewhere and saying, you know, today we don't talk about this. We talk about uh, the current topic. So I think. A happy teacher is happy because he or she is relaxed and doesn't have the pressure to put any knowledge or information or whatever into someone's heads. So just, just feel the sound of it. You are not responsible for anyone learning anything. The only thing you can do is inspire, is be an example, is um, tell stories. You, you should be a good storyteller. All the teachers I remember from my school time or from my university time, uh, the best of them were, they were really good storytellers. And speaking of some of them, I don't even remember either what they were teaching at all or um, what seminar particularly I was in. But I remember the stories and I remember that that inspired me to become a teacher. And I have to say, when I had to decide what I do after school, after A-level. So I finished school in Riga and Latvia and I took a break. And I know that in the, well, there are many countries where it's totally normal. It's, it's common to take a break, to, to take this gap year after school and just maybe travel or yeah, collect some experience from different yeah, areas of, of life, which is awesome, I think, because actually a person at the age of, I don't know, 18, 19, 
can't know what they want to do in life. So what I did, I take, uh, I took this gap year. I learned some Danish, which I didn't need for anything, but I enjoyed it. I still do. Uh, and I learned some interior design because I wanted to to get to know some something completely unusual for me. And then after this gap year, I went to university and I decided, okay, I'm going to be a teacher. And all of my teachers at school said that I'm crazy and I shouldn't do it. I shouldn't vary my, my language talent. I should do something decent with it, which was really surprising advice from teachers. So in the end, it turned out that I was the altruistic person who wanted to make uh, the world a little better than it was before I started teaching. And my way to the point where I am now was really very, yeah, it, it, I tried different uh, jobs, different teaching jobs. I have been teaching everywhere, starting from kindergarten. I hope those traumatized children whom I tried to teach some English, they are fine and uh, not traumatized. I, I used to teach German at school, at, at uh, Latvian schools and German schools, and now I ended up, or well, ended up, now I evolved to teaching adults. And what I learned, so um, I do run an online school for German as a foreign language besides my YouTube channel. And I do talk to a lot of students. So we have courses where I get to talk to every one of the students and ask them about their situation, about their lives, about their goals. And you know what is interesting? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, about 95% of especially women I talk to, they have a way higher level of language learnings of German that they think they have, point number one, which is really important. And second, they are so insecure that basically all I have to do is to say, look, you're awesome, you're doing great. And uh, yes, your, your life goals, they are great and we can help you achieve them. So what did I learn in the past four years on the way of becoming a happy teacher? That, um, it doesn't really matter what you teach. And in the case of teaching languages, yes, grammar is important, vocabulary is important, etc., etc. But if you skip the step where you are really interested in your students, when you talk to them and ask them what is it they are passionate about, even if it's not connected with school or education or anything, if you're teaching teenagers, ask them what they're passionate about. They will tell you. And if you try to approach it without prejudice and without like, oh no, you're another gamer. Uh, I know many gamers who basically do that for, for a living and they're awesome people and they enjoy gaming and they earn decent money with that. And I know most of teenagers nowadays, or many of them, uh, their dream job is to become a YouTuber, meaning something like, um, I will be a gamer or I will do some pranks on YouTube and I will become famous at Twitch, etc. So that's why I do a lot of talking to younger audience and uh, just tell them what it's like to be a YouTuber. Like, how does it work and how you work with YouTube, for example, and how they support you and many, many things uh, beyond that. So this is, I know it sounds a little weird saying that it doesn't matter what you teach, but if you ask me what I would be teaching if I wouldn't be teaching German, I'd say, okay, I would be probably teaching something else. I would be uh, organizing some seminars for women and I would work with their self-esteem, for example, on, on their goals, on achieving their goals. So if you combine what I said until now, so uh, you do not have the responsibility for anyone to learn anything in your class. So you, the only thing you can do, you can be the sparkle. You can be the, yeah, the sparkle that, that it takes to start a fire. And then if there will be a fire, you don't know that, which is a little disappointing 
if we speak about our work, so there are so many cases where we never get to know uh, what happened next. So we are not in a Hollywood movie where at some point, uh, 10 years later is shown and then we see, oh wow, how great this student evolved. So this crazy teenager I've been fighting every class with, um, he turned out to be a really creative person. So you, don't, you do not have the responsibility. And I know that mostly, most of you probably work in some kind of structure. Either you work with the state in a state school or in any other structure where you have certain things you have to do. And I know that the sparkle is not really written down in your contract probably, but this is what, what keeps us going. So we speak about um, a happy teacher. We don't speak about the successful and rich and haha, -ha, yes. Um, so we speak about the happy teacher, the teacher who enjoys his or her work, no matter if it's online or offline. And maybe your frustration about the online situation will become a little less dramatic if you keep coming back to this sparkle thought because you are valuable as a person to your students, not as a robot who gives them information about whatever, let's say German grammar or, or something else. So the point is, what I try to teach my students is that you don't need to know all the information. You need to know where to find the information when you need it, which is surprisingly new to most of them because they, well, most, most teachers also, because they think, okay, I studied so hard. I learned so many things. So, well, I'm bringing information to the students. The problem with information is that we are living in an overloaded world of, of information. So what we do on a daily basis, we fight the stream of information that comes upon us from different sources, from social networks, et cetera, et cetera. So if we teachers, uh, also do only passing on information, then what is the value about other work? Because, uh, because about our work. So uh, students can find information anywhere. They can go to YouTube where I teach, for example. So uh, they can find information everywhere. But what is it that makes the teacher in the classroom, no matter online or offline, necessary? Because if they can find information everywhere, then what is the teacher for? The teacher is there for the sparkle. The teacher is there to talk to them about their self-esteem, about their goals, about um, especially if you teach languages, we talk not about the exam they have to pass. The exam doesn't matter at all. <laughs> and uh, that comes from me. And we do have lots of online courses uh, for exam preparation. That's true, and we help preparing for exams, but that is not the important thing. Important thing is what you do next, what happens after the exam, and there is a life after the exam. It doesn't matter which exams, at the end of school or some language certificate, you never do or your students never do the certificates because they need the certificates. They, they want to you know, to, to make the next step in their life. They want a new job. They want to study at the university, etc. And every time a teacher in one of my seminars says, oh, you know, I have trouble to motivate my students. Then my next question is always, okay, what do you use to motivate them? And then they say, well, if you study hard, you will pass your exam. And that's the end of it that can't be the motivation because no one is interested in that bloody certificate of, uh, well, they get, hopefully. Okay, they, they pass the exam, they have the certificate, it is on the wall, in a frame, so what happens next? Next happens life. <laughs> so uh, next they, they make the next step and they go and achieve their goals and they find the jobs of their dreams, etc. But this is the important part. So you are there standing in front of your students, being an inspiration to them, especially if you have gone through 
a lot and most of us have interesting story to tell about their careers and decisions and mistakes. Mistakes are one of the most crucial things. I have so many friends and colleagues who say, oh, what do I do? I made a mistake in class. I put down something on the board and then I noticed then there was a mistake. And I say, okay, uh, I don't know, probably now you shoot yourself or, or <laughs> what is the problem? And they really have a problem with that. And when I say, you are a human being, so you, it's absolutely okay. First, not to know everything because you're not Google, obviously, and uh, your students can look up things in no time and you have actually no chance. If you want to position yourself as a person who knows everything because you're a teacher, obviously, so the teacher is always right, the teacher knows everything and the teacher doesn't make mistakes. So if you want to be this person, uh, then forget the part when I, what I said about the happy teacher, because these people, these teachers are not happy. They are always uh, stressed out because there might be a question from a student that they're not prepared for. And then what do you do? What do you do with a question you're not prepared for? You say, you know, I will look it up. I will tell you tomorrow or after the break or whatever. Or um, you ask the student, D do you, did you find something? Can I look at it? And then you say the most important phrase ever in the life of a student. You say, oh, thank you. Uh, that is interesting. I didn't know that. So thanks to you, I found out something new, which is a phrase I, I say constantly. I say it on a daily basis. And if it's okay for you, if you're comfortable with not being perfect, then life becomes much, much easier. So I think I'm through this with the most important things I wanted to say. And um, I will be happy to look into the, into the chat, yes, and take a sip of water um, and answer some questions you might have. So feel free to ask. Okay, there is a nice thing that seems applicable to a freelancer teacher or adult language teacher. I fortunately can relate since I'm just giving a couple of courses a week. Huh? Um, yes and no. So if you ask me, it's applicable to anything. So even if you work in a certain system which does not allow much freedom, it's still up to you what you say and how you say it. And to some students, your words mean the world. So if you say, Jesus, you're a disaster. You, you made so many mistakes in the test again. And ah, when will you start uh, studying harder or something? These are the important things you say. And it doesn't matter where you teach and who you teach. So just maybe Make sure that if you refer to mistakes students make, that you don't criticize the, the person behind the mistakes. So I keep saying that mistakes are perfect. Mistakes are necessary. Mistakes are great because we use them to learn. Imagine we wouldn't see our mistakes. They wouldn't be visible. So maybe someone else would see our mistakes, but we wouldn't. How would we learn anything? How would we evolve? Just try it out. Try, try telling a story to your students and uh, tell them something where you failed completely and, and tell them what you learned from that. Tell them uh, that you're struggling with something. For example, um, I, I'm taking classes, how do you say it in English, uh, singing vocals classes, and I'm not the best singer in the world, but I do enjoy uh, noticing that if I practice, I, I, I get better over the yeah, course of weeks and months. And this is what I tell my students. I say, remember something that you learned and where you were good at. If it's not connected with um, languages or whatever you teach. Uh, and then tell you, they, they, they tell you, 
yeah, well, I really enjoyed, I don't know, gardening or gaming or something. So try to connect to the things they are passionate about. They learned and tell them about things you're passionate about. And maybe you lose some precious time in your class. Maybe you won't finish the topic for today, but this is the class your students will remember for the rest of their lives. And this is what brings the sparkle back to you. And this is what keeps you going on the next day and the next day and the next day. So I don't know, I, I think in English there is no suitable word for that. In German, there are two words for profession. It's like Beruf and Berufung. So Beruf is your profession and Berufung is like your calling. So, and I think it's, it's necessary to distinguish between these two things. Anyone can be teaching anything for a certain period of time, but if you want to be a real teacher and you want to do it for a long time, then it should be your calling. Because otherwise, if you're not interested in people, if you're not interested in what, what I call helping people grow, I don't care if they will remember all the grammar that we are giving them in the courses I make or vocabulary, maybe they will forget half of it again. But if they take away that their worthy, that they their goals are important, that uh, their failures they, they had, that they don't really matter. They can use them as steps, you know, you can step on them and you can evolve. That is important. And that is what really makes a teacher happy. So that's why I wanted to talk to you about it. Okay, I take a look at the chat. How to be a patient teacher? That is a good question, actually, and probably I, I don't have a good answer to that, but I have noticed that I'm much more patient when I teach than in my relationship, for example, <laughs> when I talk to my daughter. So, which uh, again brings at, us to the topic of teachers being human, but um, you, I guess you, you become more patient when you take away the pressure that you have to put certain knowledge into the heads of your students in a certain period of time, then it will be more relaxed. So I think the teacher should be prepared to talk about anything at any moment of any class, which makes it challenging, but also fun. I'm afraid I have to round up at this point. Uh, thank you so much for listening and watching and participating. You are an awesome audience. I can feel it, you know, I, I know the drill. I can feel it through the camera and I hope you have fun at Expolingua.